And in a snowy city, and deserted, a girl crosses that icy field on foot, the whole city is deserted and you don't see any kind of person in the streets, but a young man lying down remembers a kiss. However, he is hopelessly lying in the snow, and the girl, even though tired, still moves forward looking for something, and so, in another scene, we are in an airport, and while a little girl waves, she notices the snow falling from the sky. And returning to the city frozen, the boy who was lying down, manages to hold the hand of the girl who was walking through the snow, and he asks her not to go, and once again at the airport, the girl waits anxiously for the plane to leave. And returning again to the minus zero couple, they are now lying on top of each other, still in the snow, but they don't seem to be uncomfortable with it, but when the clock tower bell rings, they get scared. And as a way of saying goodbye, they hug, and he confirms with her, if she can hear what he said and understand, and she says yes, and finally they kiss, at the same time as the turbine of the plane that was about to depart, catches fire, causing a rude explosion in front of the young girl, who could only be terrified by what she saw, and so, after the big kiss, a third girl, carrying large sugoi's dekais, closes a manga she was reading, and while she does this, a blue-haired man notices her action, and she continues saying that she's finally finished, and being happy with so much youth, she says that she managed to read her last manga, and now she's going to finish it all, and the girl says this with a smile on her face, while she's high on a bridge, standing outside the guardrail and watching the trains. However, that man from before talks to her, saying that what she is doing is dangerous, but she says that that manga messed with her heart, making her envy that love, but it is impossible. Not with her body, and this arouses that man's curiosity, but she turns to him, and points a knife, saying that she was going to die, and asking him not to worry. However, the guy continues to be cool, sitting and drinking his bubble tea, and when he doesn't react, she starts to get impatient, asking if he understands, and says that touching his body would give him a mysterious and incurable illness, which would make him die. However, the guy continues to be soft and drink his tea, and she once again claims to be serious, saying that continuing to live with this body would not bring anything good, but in that case, he stands up, and starts walking towards her, and when she says that she would have to die for this, he sticks his own chest into the knife she was holding, and the girl is scared when she sees that her knife is stuck in his chest, and it gets worse when he coughs up blood, and she asks how that happened, wondering if he really did that, but he laughs with his mouth full of blood, and grabs her by the cheeks, wondering if he would get a disease just by touching her, but he says he's never heard of it, look, I can think of three just by mentioning the subject, but he says he wants to see what it will be like, and tells her that signing with Vasco because she wants to is a bit of a joke these days, and takes her out of danger, and when he lets her go, he starts saying that his hand was in contact with her all the time, but she doesn't even hear it, she just feels her cheeks swollen after what he did, but he doesn't stop, he starts asking her where it would hurt, inside, outside, he wants to know how the disease will kill him, however, she just says that she is arriving, and when he asks what, she says that it is her bad luck, and when he actually arrives, a part of the platform comes loose, causing him to fall from the support right in front of a train. And when she just hears the noise, she starts to apologize, saying that she did it once again, she blames herself for dragging another person with her, and all because it took her too long to take her life. However, from behind her, a head comes flying, in a spray of blood, and after landing close to her, he starts chatting with the girl saying that he now understands her problem. He says that the illness excuse is just to protect others, but she doesn't even care what he's saying, just being in disbelief with a talking head, and at that he starts to levitate spurting blood, and says that's good. And as he continues his speech, his body reassembles itself in front of her, and he says that she is also on that side of the world, and as he recreates himself, every part of his body is restored, tattoos, scars, until he finally reappears in front of her, naked, but he's almost intact, but she notices the naked part too, and starts screaming seeing it shake, and thinks he's a zombie, punching his Santa Claus in the sack, and she runs away screaming in despair, but he gets angry, telling her not to put him with that rotten meat bunch, and then, he once again uses his blood as propellant and goes to her, grabbing the girl and saying that he is undead, and says that even though he doesn't want to get straight to the point, he still has some questions to ask her, he wants to know more about the bad luck she mentioned earlier, but when he was about to start the interrogation, the police went there to see what it was all about and he took advantage of the fact that things were getting tougher to get out of there with her. And then he uses his blood to jump from building to building like a ketchup Spider-Man, and the girl can only be scared to death about it and when he finally stops his legs go back to normal. And he asks her if she liked jumping off buildings like that, he explains to her that he regenerates his torn off legs at high speed, thus giving him the momentum he needs to jump. However, the poor thing is shaking on the floor, and while he speaks, she wants to use this time to run away, but he doesn't let her, 
he grabs her foot and holds her upside down, saying that they still have questions and that she wouldn't go to nowhere. But she says that he is touching her leg, soon bad luck would come again, but he says that since he is touching her clothes, nothing would happen, and she is amazed that he has already understood her curse up to this point, and tells him to let her go one more time, and he then says that he doesn't care, but from there it would be a very long fall and so she looks down, seeing that she is on top of a building, ready to fall. And he tells her to explain this bad luck once and for all, but she refuses, she says that she was planning to die today anyway, so his threats don't scare her at all. And he gets mad at this stubbornness, starting tossing her on the edge of the building, and so she assumes that she is scared, and says that she would tell him what he wants to know, and when he puts her on the ground, she is unable to move but he is already forcing her to say. And then, she says that it all started 10 years ago, when she was 8 years old, her parents were about to travel and she was saying goodbye to them, as they were going abroad and spending a good time there, she hugged them a lot with they. And about half an hour later, their plane had a problem, where it exploded from the inside out, all 270 people inside, including their parents died. And since then she has gradually confirmed the level of contact that causes bad luck and can confirm that it was she who did that to her parents, but when he says he understands, he hugs her from behind, but inside her blouse. Asking if the greatest bad luck really happens when she is hugged, but seeing his hand inside her clothes, she freaks out, and asks if he wasn't listening to her. However, he says that yes, he was, but now he is testing what he discovered, but she asks why he is doing it that way, and he just says that direct contact is necessary, and while they are in this grab, grab. A plane passing by has an open compartment and a box falls out of it, crushing that crazy man, and she sees that he died from a banana, but doesn't care, saying that she needs to run before it's too late. But he comes back to life, saying that wouldn't work, and as she continues running to get away from him, she slips on a banana, which causes her to fall off the building. She starts to wonder if her life would end because of a slip on a banana, and she starts to get emotional, saying that she never tried anything, not fashion, love, she never managed to do anything feminine. And as she fell, her manga flew out of her hand, flying so that she could no longer catch it, and so she realized that she was not ready to die yet. And then, like a ninja, the undead begins to fall along with her, and while he is still in free fall, he makes a shin bone grow and uses it on buildings, so that he can attach himself to the building and slow down his fall, while saving the crazy girl. But this is easier said than done, and even though he caught her and stuck himself in the building, they still keep falling, and she has her eyes closed and crying, but he calls her, saying that now that he has found a power that can give him a death, will not let it escape. He feels that she didn't tell him everything back there and if he discovers this hidden rule, he might get a stroke of bad luck strong enough to kill him, and with that stroke he could end his ridiculously long life. And so, he says that he will go to his hiding place to analyze her better, and while he is flying away with her blood, a suit with a katana is watching him, saying that he would follow him and analyze the new mutant that is with him. And then, he takes her to his house, and begins to narrate her power, saying that time is linked to the intensity of the disaster, and then he asks her to take off her clothes, to see if the area of contact also affects the intensity. But she just runs away, she says she won't undress for him, but he says he's doing it because of her, as she doesn't want to tell him the rules, but he keeps insisting, until she says it's something that it will touch her heart too much. But as she runs, she ends up losing her hat and her gigantic hair is left loose, and when he approaches her, he comments on how big her hair is, and she starts crying, saying that he saw everything, and she explains that it's not their fault, since no one can cut it because any hairdresser would end up dead, and then, he pulls out scissors, removing her bangs. And she asks what he would be doing, but he tells her not to move because as long as he is touching her, no bad luck will appear, and in that time, he will put an end to it. However, she is scared, because when he releases her, all the bad luck would appear at once, and he asks her what she would be worried about, saying that he is an undead after all. And she asks if he's ever been a stylist, but she says it's been a long time, and when she's done, he takes out a piece of glass to show her the result, and when she looks at it, she smiles. And he dresses her in a coat, and when he gets up, he starts to smile, saying that he was stuck to her for 15 minutes and that would give him absurd bad luck, but when he was expecting that, his head gets cut off. And that same suit appears, thanking the unlucky girl for helping them, because thanks to her, he let his guard down and she asks who they are, but before that, he puts his head in a special compartment. Everything so that he won't be able to regenerate anytime soon and while they're talking, one of the men goes behind Fuko and handcuffs her, and she then asks if they're not on her side. And he says no, they just police any denier who may be unsupervised or an UMA who throws the world into chaos, but she doesn't understand what he's talking about. And he appears behind her, saying that her ability is to deny any luck from the person who touches her, killing the target, 
but once you know the ability, it's easy to fight her. Because if he touches her with the help of some tissue, the ability becomes useless, and she asks if he wants to do something with his power, but he says he could, but the only ability would be to kill. And he says it's the same with the living dead, he caught her thinking about this possibility, but Fuko starts to defend him, she says that even though she knows him today, he used her ability just to make himself die, and says that he wouldn't be like this organization, but he holds her face, telling her to be careful with her mouth, but she starts saying that the zombie touched her without wearing gloves, and thanks him, and while she does this, a huge beam goes towards him, but stops at the man who was holding his head, making him fall hard, and the others are in doubt, as the conditions were not met. But in the same way, he comes out of the hole recovering himself, but their leader tells them to be careful, because even though he is undead, they could still defeat him, as he is an amateur in martial arts. But he says that this may be now, but not then, he says he put a stopper in his brain so that it wouldn't get out of control, but he takes that iron out of his head, returning to his glory days, and easily defeating the men in front of him, and he says that he now understands, because having his head cut off was not due to her bad luck, and he says that he needs to study about this bad luck delay. And with that, the man understands that in addition to not dying, the experiences of his life are also his weapons, and says that he will have to use a dirty trick, using Fuko as a hostage and telling him to hand over his head without regenerating. But he is disappointed, because he thinks he will have finally a good fight, and in that he starts to cut off her head to hand over, and she tells him to stop, because she doesn't want to see anyone else getting hurt because of her. And when she finishes her cute speech, she sees him making a mess of himself, and gets mad at him, but he says the time they spent together was fun, so he wants to see her again someday. However, she doesn't want things to end like this, and says she knows how to trigger an even stronger stroke of bad luck, and so she breaks free from the agent who was holding her and runs towards the zombie, thinking that she doesn't know if that would work, but want to try. And then she gives the flying head a little kiss, but the suit catches him anyway and asks her what she would be doing, but she says that this is cool, leaving all her worries aside and touching someone. And she says it's coming, your bad luck, and with that he says he understands, starting to heal and telling her to run, and then, they start the fight, with him being impaled with the katana, and the zombie grabbing the man's head, while saying he won, and in that, he says that the guy's luck has run out, and as he grabs him from behind, a meteor falls directly into the hiding place, and the destruction is enormous, and after that, Fuko feels sad for him, but out of the smoke, the zombie appears, and he says that he had never handled a meteor in his entire life and even tells her that he is not a zombie at all, and yes a living dead, so taking advantage, he thanks her, because that was good luck, but she doesn't know if that would be cool. And then, a little later, she introduces herself as Izumo Fuko and asks his name, but he says he doesn't remember, and asks if undead wouldn't be good, but she says no and that she would have to name him, thus making the name Andy, mixing walking dead into a name. And he even accepts, leaving her happy, and changing the subject, he says that a kiss was capable of all that, and he says that next time they would have to go further, proposing to do a SNU, SNU with her, but Fuko just gets scared of him. And so, the first episode of this insane anime ends, if you want the next EP, say it below, because I'm going to post it in full, leave a like there too to give some morale to the series and let's go with everything for the 15k subscribers, see you in the next video.